Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm currently working on a few big history major flaws and why they got cancelled videos, but in the meantime I wanted to do another episode of Mopar News for January 2023. There might not be any crazy blockbuster headlines this month, but there are lots of interesting things. We've got an update on the final Challenger, an even rarer 2023 Chrysler 300, a Ram 1200 spotted, Durango launch edition, 6.7 liter Cummins hydrogen engine updates, a future Chrysler cockpit synthesis, and more. So let's get started. I wanted to start by looking at something unexpected, but crazy enough we will have another extremely rare Chrysler 300 model for 2023. We've just seen the 6.4 liter Hemi Power 300C with 2000 units only that sold out in just 12 hours. Unbelievably, the 300S will be even more rare. Chrysler is only going to be producing 850 of the 300S V6 models, and 1,450 of the V8 models with the 5.7 Hemis. I'm not sure why Chrysler would do such a thing, but these 300S models are going to be some of the rarest 300s ever produced, entering SRT8 territory. And after that, the 300 will be gone as we know it. Next is an update on the final Dodge Challenger Hellcat. We will finally be seeing this revealed at the Dodge Last Call Performance Festival at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway on March 20, 2023, so only two more months of waiting. It seems that Dodge wanted to give the car the attention it deserved, rather than the bigger SEMA show where it was supposed to debut, but there's also the fact that Dodge blew up 7 engines during testing, so there were definitely some problems with it, as admitted by Dodge CEO Tim Kaniskis. We expect this final Challenger to have a 3 liter supercharger and run on ethanol, leading to over 900 horsepower. Another noteworthy item would be some spy shots of a new Ram 1200. The 1200 had previously been offered in the Middle East from 2016 to 2019, but it shared a platform with the Fiat Fullback and Mitsubishi Triton, and was never a hit due to being quite small. Now a new Ram 1200 has been spotted in Pernambuco, a northern Brazilian state near where a Jeep Fiat factory is located. Automotive website Noticias Automotivas published an article with a few spy shots of a new 1200 with padded fenders and a huge grill. So it appears this is a new pickup being developed by Stellantis, with a unibody design, 5 meters long, and based on the Jeep Compass. This is designed to take on the Ford Maverick, so finally we could see a Ram 1200, or they could call it a Dakota, return for the US, Canada, Mexico, and South America. It would be small and inexpensive, which it has to be since the Maverick starts at just $23,690. It would also be powered by the 2 liter turbocharged engine, making 200 horsepower and 221 pound feet of torque, with either a ZF8 or 9-speed automatic, and a hybrid model could also be developed to go up against the Hyundai Santa Cruz. Next we'll move on to hydrogen. We've heard rumors for a while about a Ram hydrogen engine, and Stellantis themselves said that they were pursuing a hydrogen-powered version for the next-gen Ram heavy-duty pickup. This vehicle would eliminate the towing range anxiety, while also working towards the company's zero emissions target. Cummins announced they were going to produce a hydrogen version of the B6.7 engine, which is the base for the popular 6.7 liter Cummins inline 6 turbo diesel that's found under the hood of the current Ram heavy duty truck lineup. A recent video by Cummins gave us more insight on this, showing how they can convert a medium duty delivery truck to operate on zero carbon hydrogen fuel that's powered by that new B6.7H hydrogen internal combustion engine, also called H2 ICE and that's without compromising performance, cargo capacity, or payload. The H2 ICE features a 700 bar pressure high capacity hydrogen storage system that allows the vehicle to have a range of 310 miles or about 500 kilometers. The engine is rated at 290 horsepower and 886 pound-feet of torque and was easily integrated with existing diesel driveline components. This is big news as hydrogen could have the potential to replace battery electric vehicles or even allow Stellantis to have a hydrogen Hemi of some sort if the BEVs are a total flop. Wishful thinking I know, but a Mopar enthusiast can dream. Those battery electric vehicles are powered by energy from fossil fuels, whereas hydrogen fuel can be zero carbon produced using electricity from solar panels or wind turbines, and the hydrogen fuels do not release any particulate matter, carbon monoxide, or volatile organic compounds. So the potential for this is pretty exciting, as the hydrogen engines are based on diesel or gas motors that are reliable and use familiar technology and engine components that are good for fleets and customers alike. The H2 ICE would offer a zero carbon solution at a lower cost than BEVs, 
and it would eliminate about 25% of all the greenhouse gas emissions from the transportation sector if all the medium and heavy duty trucks were switched over to hydrogen in the US alone. The only downside is the limited access to hydrogen aside from the public refueling stations in California. It's expected that a hydrogen powered Cummins Ram heavy duty should get to production by 2027. Next is another questionable act from Dodge as they have a very underwhelming Durango launch edition. This is a package only available for a limited time on the SXT and GT and basically adds some popular content at a discounted price. For example, the SXT version adds a trailer tow group, full speed collision warning, adaptive cruise control with stop, and the park sense rear park assist system, $2,000 worth of goods for $14.95. The GT adds heated front seats and steering wheel with the 10.1 inch Uconnect 5 touchscreen that gives you $3,100 of stuff for $2,000. So while no one is complaining about a discount, I hope Dodge can actually make a limited edition model like the Charger and Challenger Buzz models as a proper send off for the Durango, a crappy launch edition just doesn't quite cut it. The Chrysler brand has been fairly quiet for some time, but they gave us another glimpse into the future at the Consumer Electronics Show in January in Vegas by having a Chrysler synthesis demonstrator. This is the next step in Chrysler's revitalization as they're launching their first battery electric vehicle in 2025 and this is the type of cockpit we could see in a future vehicle, like for example a Chrysler Airflow. There are three components, Stella Smart Cockpit, Stella Brain, and Stella Auto Drive. The Brain and Cockpit work together using the massive 37.2 inches of infotainment for both the front row passengers. Advanced AI and over-the-air updates adapt and enhance the user interface over time, and there are features like a virtual assistant, which can do tasks such as automatically installing updates, syncing to calendars for schedule and route planning, allowing multitasking while driving autonomously, recommending parking and charging options, assisting with e-commerce services, seamlessly connecting to devices and smart homes, and offering tranquil in-vehicle experiences. Stella Auto Drive will use the Level 3 autonomous driving features, so drivers can take their hands off the wheel and eyes off the road. Finally, there's a day in the life experience where the vehicle provides a welcome to the owner and maps out an intelligent trip plan for the day. The AI advanced technology handles autonomous driving, locating parking spaces and charging ports, and much more. So again, this is the type of cockpit we should expect on a future 2025 Chrysler vehicle. Another interesting piece of news was this new Peugeot concept also shown off at the Consumer Electronics Show called the Inception. This is a two-door coupe based on the Stella Large Platform and uses the same 800 volt architecture that's found on the Dodge Charger Daytona SRT Banshee EV concept. Peugeot says this car has a 500 mile range and 670 horsepower. With all wheel drive, it can do 0 to 60 in just under 3 seconds. The Inception features Peugeot's next gen cockpit design called Hypersquare, which gets rid of the steering shaft in favor of a steer by wire system. That means the round wheel is gone, replaced by a square or rectangle that has four corners to control features. The front end gets a new Lion logo that merges with the entire grille. Peugeot says the Inception features the Stella Auto Drive Level 4 autonomy, and that means the steering wheel and dashboard retracts, transforming the car into a comfortable lounge while it drives you. The goal here is to see some of these technologies used on future vehicles by 2026, but we could also see an ultra performance EV from the brand like this one. Last up, I had to mention this gorgeous 2008 Dodge Challenger SRT8. This is a first edition, or also sometimes called inaugural edition with 6,400 produced for the US and 500 for Canada in the first year of the return of the Challenger for 2008. This one's finished in Hemi Orange, car number 5,268, but the real stunning aspect here is the car has just 579 miles driven on it since being purchased brand new in Peoria, Arizona. So what a gorgeous car this is, basically brand new, a dream car of many with the 6.1 liter Hemi V8 with 425 horsepower under the hood. It's at auction on bringatrailer.com, and the bids are currently at $25,250 when I made this video. Bidding ends on January 26th. So that's the end of this video. What was your favorite piece of news? Let me know down in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for all your Mopar content, and I'll see you in the next one.